first time in my life I've ever followed Mary, so. Uh, oh, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> So thank you for letting me interrupt the music uh, to do some stand-up. Uh, Mary and I do spend uh, the last 40 years, as much in June as we can in Wellfleet, and uh, this is the first time I've seen an open mic in Wellfleet, though, so I had to take advantage of it. Uh, I have, I'm new to this field, I've been doing this for about five years, but I take every chance I get, and uh, it's easy. Since, uh, since Trump, I know you don't want to be political, but uh, uh, you know, just in the middle of being attacked on both our borders. So we have to talk about that. And uh, you know, I've known in, in Boston, as Boston's oldest new comic. And I take that, I take that well. Uh, elderly people, as many of you know, uh, are the only people you can still make fun of and uh, get away with. But, uh, and most of my audiences are millennials, and so I'm usually at least three times older than the people I talk to, but I'm really delighted. I don't want to stereotype anybody here to have this audience. Uh, I, uh, uh, I'm the only one I know of, maybe this has happened to you, whose AARP card has, I had a lifelong membership that's actually expired. <laughs> that's true, by the way, there's a, not a memory anymore. Uh, I have mixed feelings about the president because uh, we have some things in common. We're the same age, uh, and we both have been devastatingly disappointed with the quality of America's hair restoration products. <laughs> <laughs> Donald has been dealing with, with two high-level national security issues this week. One is the infestation, as he describes it, of toddler terrorists on the Mexican border. and. Uh, he has uh, developed, you know, the, the strategy there is to put the babies in cages and to scare uh, other women who may bring their babies here into not, not coming here by doing that. That's been controversial, so the administration has added two new words to its list of words that you can't use to talk about them. Uh, you probably remember when they said that you couldn't use uh, diversity, uh, you couldn't use uh, vulnerable, uh, you couldn't use transgender, you couldn't use fetus, you couldn't use evidence-based, uh, and you couldn't use science-based. And the new words that you can't use are concentration camp and cages. So I was talking about to remember the words you can't use, you should try to put them all in one sentence. And uh, I've tried to do that. Uh, let's see if I can, I can do it for you. Uh, vulnerable, transgendered, diverse fetuses deserve evidence-based and science-based entitlements and placement in cages in concentration camps. <laughs> That's not too good. <laughs> Thank you, I appreciate that. Uh, are we also getting uh, attacked from our northern border, and we're more familiar with that in this area, uh, and this is can't make this up. This is that's the nice thing about Donald. You don't have to make it up. You just quote him. This is what he said yesterday: is that uh, barefoot Canadians are swarming the border in Maine. They're coming down here to buy shoes because their tariffs on shoes are so high, and they stuff them up. He says before they go back to Canada, so they can get through customs without paying the fees. And now, obviously, it's a national security issue. Well, what makes a national security issue I've been trying to think of all day? And apparently it is that if we go to war again, that it's likely our army is going to run out of shoes uh, because the Canadians have bought all our shoes. <laughs> all right. Uh, I buy that. I buy that. Right? Uh, the other thing Canada's done is it's showing up our FDA and our Food and Drug Administration is supposed to be the best in the world. And when they make a decision, it's generally accepted by everyone else. Uh, as you may remember, or you may not, because it was a giant dud in the United States, a few years ago, the FDA approved what's called the pink pill uh, for women, uh, added, which is supposed to uh, be a treatment for hypoactive sexual desire disorder. Uh, and, fancy word of saying, uh, I'm not interested in having sex with you. Uh, and. A couple of men, of course there were men, decided that if a woman wasn't interested in having sex with them, 
There must be something wrong with her. She must be sick. So we have to develop a pill for this. And they did. And it was a pill, theoretically, to increase uh, sexual desire or libido. And the FDA turned it down twice and finally just barely approved it uh, on a close vote uh, in, their, in their review panel. And it was put on the market and nobody bought it, and not surprisingly, it was a big dud in the United States. Uh, first of all, you know, the only people who can take it are uh, premenopausal women who don't drink. And, uh, <laughs> and they, it's taken just before bedtime, and its main side effect is you pass out. <laughs> it's unclear why that drug would be, uh, <laughs> And it's not, it wasn't, it didn't sell in the United States. But now it's being reintroduced. Uh, Trudeau is reintroducing it in Canada. And it's gotten uh, the approval of their equivalent of the FDA. And it says this is all true. Trudeau uses it himself. He says it makes him look more sexually attractive to everybody, except Donald Trump, apparently. <laughs> uh, and, and in what they did in Canada is another study. They kept studying how do you study. Female sexual desire disorder is really an interesting question. So they have a, they did a questionnaire. They called them up every month. They asked them to keep track of their sexual uh, experiences, satisfying sexual experiences, in the last month, and tell the person who called on the phone uh, how many they had. And they could count a number of things. They could count uh, sexual intercourse. They could count oral sex. They could count masturbation. And they could count stimulation by partner. Uh, and what they found out in that study after a year is that women experienced 0.5 extra satisfying sexual events every month when they were on the attic. And they thought that was great. They didn't tell you which half, by the way. Um, but, uh, but and that, was enough, that was enough evidence for the Canadians to make this drug available to their women, to the Canadian women. Uh, they did one other thing, too, which they had to do in order to make the drug. They said, well, let's ignore the data that shows if you drink, you're going to pass out uh, and just say it's OK to drink and take the drug uh, as well. And that, we're going to wait to see, but that may make it uh, a better seller. There may not be an epidemic of uh, hypoactive sexual desire disorder, but there is an epidemic of low T. And I'm sure many of, the, of our male members in the audience are well familiar with. Uh, and low testosterone has been a plague of American males, at least if you listen to the ads. And if you go online, I'm sure some of you have done this, you can take a quiz to find out if you have low T. <laughs> I'm not going to ask you if you've taken this quiz. But I took it, uh, and you just have to answer uh, six simple little questions. Uh, the first one is, lately, have you noticed a de decrease in your ability to play sports? <laughs> and my answer to that was, no, not lately. That happened a long time ago. Uh, the second question is, have you noticed a decrease in your libido? Then they have in parentheses, uh, sexual desire. Uh, I know what libido means, but I'm not telling you the answer to that question. I don't care that for that to be on the internet. Uh, thirdly, after dinner, are you falling asleep? <laughs> yeah. That's well. That's uh, fourth, uh, have you lost height? <laughs> I never had height. <laughs> what the hell? Uh, fifth, are you grumpy? <laughs> well, I'm getting grumpy now, you know, answering all these silly questions. And, uh, and finally, uh, are your erections less firm? Again, I'm not answering that one uh, on the internet. Uh, so when you're done with that, and it, I think no matter how uh, what you do when you're, when you're done answering those questions. You are taken uh, to another site, to another website. And uh, it's an acronym because it's still hooked up to President Obama. And Obama is saying, under Obamacare, if you like your erection, you can keep it. <laughs> it's just another promise, you know, that uh, goes unfulfilled. Uh, so let me conclude then for, uh, for people my age uh, who are beginning to suffer various ailments. The medical profession really can't help us very much, and they know it. So what they've done is suggested new names for old diseases that, that make us feel better about having them. 
Uh, ALS is now called the Ice Bucket Challenge Disease. <laughs> heart attack is called heart embrace. Necrophilia is called endless love syndrome. <laughs> Hypoactive female sexual desire disorder is called just go to sleep. Erectile dysfunction is called roller coaster disorder. And finally, senile dementia is called wait, wait, don't tell me. Thank you very much. I'm <laughs>